This cannot be ignored. We have the sickest generation in American history. We have the sickest children on earth in this country. We spend more on health care by far than any other country, and we have the worst health outcomes. On August 23rd, RFK Jr. suspended his campaign for President of the United States and joined forces with former President Donald J. Trump to unite our country. Now, you and I may not agree on politics, religious views, parenting, or even how to treat a cold, as these two don't agree on everything either. But I think we can find some unity like these two have on one stance that RFK Jr. stands for and is very outspoken about. That stance being to make America healthy again. Talked about, not about the things that separate us because we don't agree on everything, but on the values and the issues that bind us together. And one of the issues that he talked about was having safe food and ending the chronic disease epidemic. And don't you want a president that's going to make America healthy again? This video is not a political ad, but I do have to highlight what RFK Jr. and former President Trump stand for. Ending the chronic disease epidemic. In quotes, an estimated 129 million people in the U.S. have at least one major chronic disease, that being heart disease, cancer, diabetes, obesity, and hypertension, as defined by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. And continuing, five of the top 10 leading causes of death in the U.S. are or are strongly associated with preventable and treatable chronic diseases. This is the worst. Working as a bedside nurse, primarily in medical surgical nursing, I have seen my fair share of chronic diseases. I want to say the typical patient I cared for was roughly on five or more prescription medications. Now that was about the average when I think back to it. It was always shocking when you would care for a patient who would come in and had no medications they were on. You think it would be the opposite though, being on five or so medications or some patients were on 10, 15, 20 different medications, that would be shocking, right? Well, it wasn't. That just kind of felt like the norm. And something is very wrong with this picture. We have so many resources at our fingertips here in America. So why is America not getting healthier? RFK Jr. has a great video on his campaign page about chronic disease. And just as a sidebar, RFK Jr. is out of the race, although he still has his campaign page. So if you are in one of those states, that will still have his name on the ballot come November, do not vote for him. Your vote will be wasted. It will mean nothing. So sidebar over, let's go ahead and watch this video from his campaign page. The debate between, you know, Medicaid for all or whether there's a public option or a gradual integration or Obamacare, whatever it is, it's all about moving deck chairs around in the Titanic. And what we should be saying is how do we reduce the cost? We pay $4.3 trillion for health care. That dwarfs what anybody else pays in the world per capita. We're paying two or three or four times with European nations soon, we're getting worse outcomes. Finally, a politician who is questioning why America is not getting better. I've seen it firsthand, and I'm sure many of you have too, whether that be you being the patient or you being the provider. So what is going on? RFK Jr. wants to get to the bottom of this, and I am in full support of that. RFK Jr. seems to be pretty crunchy, and again, I am in full support of that too. Some of you may know that term, and some of you may not, so let me explain. Crunchy with a Y on the end can be used both as a compliment or an insult. I guess it depends on how you look at it. It. it first goes back to 1982 when students used the word crunch, crunchy, or crunchy granola to describe someone who is annoyingly intense about health or environmental issues. And I was first introduced to this word a few years ago when I moved down here to Georgia and someone asked me from my church if I was crunchy. I had no idea what they meant at the time, but they asked me this because they knew I lived a more holistic and natural lifestyle. I try to eat as natural as possible. I avoid toxic chemicals in my makeup and body products, in my carpets, bedding, all of it. I try to avoid 
avoid BPA, plastic, all that stuff. And I also believe exercise is very important too. So just being educated on this and also following this deemed me as crunchy or annoyingly intense about health issues according to online etymology dictionary. But I don't take it as an insult. I think it's actually kind of a compliment. And I am here to compliment RFK Jr. on being crunchy too. And as you can hear, this topic is very important to me. I think it should be very important to you too though. Because America has the highest chronic disease burden in the world. We didn't always. In 1940s, 50s, and 60s, we had a really healthy population. We had only 6% of our citizens or children had chronic disease. By 2006, it was 54%. And by chronic disease, what do I mean? I mean obesity, neurological diseases, neurodevelopmental, ADD, ADHD, speech delay, language delay, tics, Tourette's syndrome, ASD, and autism. Autism went from one in every 10,000 in my generation to one in every 34 kids today. This epidemic is real. It is not the result of changing diagnostic criteria. It is not the result of better recognition. It is an epidemic. And why aren't we asking the question? What happened? Did you hear what he said? In the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, we had a really healthy population. Only 6% of children had chronic disease. But now, according to a recent study, one in four children have a chronic disease. I'm just going to reiterate that again. One in four children have a chronic disease. We went from 6% of children to one in four. If you don't care about this topic for yourself, care about it for our children, your nieces, your nephews, the children in your own community. Take a look at this page from the CDC, Healthy Schools page. Do you see these chronic diseases? Do you see that it says more than 40% of school age children and adolescents have at least one chronic health condition. Think about how that affects the future of America. Think back to that video of the boys at recess in the 1960s from RFK's campaign page. They look strong, they look tough, and they look healthy. Healthy enough to probably join the military, right? Can you imagine what we will be facing years from now if we do not get a grip on this epidemic in our children? Will we even have any teenagers, adolescents to meet the requirements to join the military? Will they have to change the military standards, which is actually frightening. RFK Jr. and so many others like myself don't see chronic disease and think, oh, well, this is just what happens when you age. We see it for what it is. It's an epidemic. And again, not only for the adults of America, but for our children too. And there's so much more we could go into on this subject, but I urge you to really hear what RFK Jr. is saying and make a change in your life or your children's lives if you have not been putting your health or your children's health on the forefront. We are to be good stewards of our bodies and I am here to educate you on a politician who is taking a stand and being outspoken on how you can care for your body. I have always loved how Allie Beth Stuckey says it. Politics matter because policy matters because people matter. Politics affects policy, policy affects people, and people matter. People matter because they're made in the image of God. People matter to God and therefore, especially to Christians, they matter to us. Politics is not the only way to love your neighbor, but it is a way to love your neighbor. It's not just some abstract debate that's going on between people who like to get into arguments and on Facebook. Their policies that really affect the lives of people, especially the most vulnerable, especially those without political capital, like children, like babies. And so it is a way for us to be responsible citizens, to engage and to love our neighbor, to treat other people how we would want to be treated. Have you seen a decline in our healthcare system? in the food we eat? Has it affected you and your family? Share your stories down below. I would love to hear from you. You matter to me and I want to be here for you. Your health matters to me and I want to be here to support your 
health. Please like and share this video as that helps this topic get out there to many others just like yourself. Also make sure to subscribe to my channel for new videos coming out every single week on holistic health and holistic living. In the bio of my YouTube channel, there's a link to my Amazon storefront where I have holistic health and holistic living items separated into categories making for easy non-toxic shopping. So make sure to go check that out as well. But other than that, that is it for today's video everyone. Thank you for tuning in and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. See ya.